and welcome to Savagely Delightful, a podcast exposing the Schadenfreude nature in all of us. Each week, your co-hosts John and Christy will be coming at you with different stories of people making the kind of dumb mistakes that we all just love to hear about. Welcome back, everyone. I'm John. And I'm Christy. And this is Savagely Delightful. Ooh, you got it right this time. Yep. Episode three. Yeah. Can't believe we're doing three episodes already. Yep. We're cracking these out. Getting them done. Yeah, yeah. All right. So for our first story today, this is submitted by Dane DeBeau. Yeah. Dane, Dane DeBeau? That's how I'd say it, yeah. Okay. And he put, uh, today I fucked up by sitting too close to the fire escape hell. Dane, sorry if we mispronounced your last name. Yeah, my bad. Also... Our bad. <laughs> it's all <yeah>. good. <clears throat> um, also, this story has an arachnophobia warning. So if you have any kind of fear, um, you might want to skip these next few minutes because... It's gonna get gross. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a doozy. So... This happened about 10 years ago in Australia, just outside of... Oh, Australia too. Oh yeah, they always have crazy shit. Uh, just outside of Jindabyne? J- Jindabyne? No idea. Sure. All right. Looks about right. Yeah, Jindabyne, New South Wales. We were all around 20 years old at the time, and we were looking forward to letting loose a little. A group of about 10 of us went on a trip to a holiday house in New South Wales mountain region. It wasn't cold enough to snow, but the nights were pretty crisp, so we pulled up to an old outdoor barbecue and proceeded to build a fire. As it usually goes, the size of the fire continued to grow, and we were all nestling into our positions around it for optimal warmth. Then, a couple of the boys came back from a wood hunt with a big branch that was pretty fresh, about three or four meters long, and required three people to lift it. Then, they placed the heavy end on the fire, and we sat down to watch it catch. Fresh wood never catches properly. No, especially if you're just starting a fire, too. Yeah, it's not hot. The coals aren't hot enough. Yeah. And then it's just going to smoke, and then the smoke follows you, and then you just have a bad time because smoke's in your eye everywhere you go. Yeah, and then you just smell like smoke the whole night. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) It was a fairly slow process because the fire wasn't really big enough for the branch to catch quickly, and there was quite a bit of smoke due to the big chunk of bark wrapped around at the end of the fire. Once it began to catch, I scooted my seat a bit closer to and bathed happily in the warmth. At this point, someone said, what the fuck? And another shouted, it's breathing. Oh, God. As he pointed at the huge piece of bark, which was now literally breathing in and out against the branch. That just gave me a cold chill, too. Like, ugh. <laughs> we could hear sizzling, and we all oh. jumped up. Then it began. Oh, God. One huntsman spider... Big, scary, hairy mofos, which are basically harmless in a giant shack-like way, (laughs) crawled out of the gap between the branch and the bark, and then just fell into the fire to die. Then another, and another, and within 30 seconds, it seemed like there were hundreds pouring out, trying to escape the heat. Imagine World War Z zombies, but spiders. They quickly discovered they could avoid the fire by just running down the log and jumping into the grass or going the whole way into the darkness. I jumped on my seat, as did a few others, while the rest just ran onto the concrete into the safety of the light. Soon enough, Mm. the whole ground was alive with spiders running through the grass and into the darkness. Are the spiders afraid of light, I'm guessing? Um, I don't know. I I don't know a lot about huntsmen spiders. Like, I don't think they're, like, nocturnal or anything. Yeah. But, uh, like, huntsman spiders get to be big. Ugh. Like, not full dinner size plate, but, like, you know those little, like, pastry size plates? Ugh. They can get to be, like, that big. That's so bad. That's a massive spider. Oh, God. And hunt. Ooh. Yeah. Nope. Fuck Australia. Mm-mm. Australia's <laughs> got some mean bugs. Oh, yeah. They've got mean everything. Uh. <laughs> like, I've always wanted to go when I was younger, but, like, since I've heard all the no. horror stories... Yeah. And actually, I'm bel- I'm pretty sure that it's illegal to kill some of the spiders there. You have to capture them and, like, release them back out into the mm. wild. And, like, he says they're harmless. Nope. No. Fuck nope. all that noise. Nope. I don't think so. So they were running through the grass and into the darkness. I was stuck on my seat and just looking around at this point, waiting for it to end. 
but they just kept on pouring out from of under the bark and escaping or sizzling in the fire. Ugh. The log was alive. Licking at the ground was like a horror acid trip. And then the only thing protecting me was my old wiry camping chair I was perched on. <laughs> I mean, how do you trust that chair for you them not to like... jump up and hope to God it does not break. I mean, yeah, that, but And like, that you're balanced enough. You hop onto the chair. What's stopping the spiders from like crawling up the chair and onto oh, you? Yeah. Where do you go from there? You're surrounded. Mm. It was a stupid decision. Ugh, can you imagine if you lose your balance as you're standing on your chair and then you fall and you're like laying on the ground and then they crawl all over you. They crawl all over <laughs> you, under your shirt, into your jacket, oh, down don't. your pants, into your nose and your nope. eyes and ears and mm. all across your forehead get stuck in your hair. Mm. Is that what you wanted? No. You like that? It's kind of the opposite of what I wanted. <laughs> Thanks a lot for that. Loved it. <laughs> Yet it kept on going. More spiders. <laughs> The guy on the concrete, the guys on the concrete were laughing because they didn't want to go into the light. And of course, me and the other guys stuck in the spider sea like me were screaming and laughing hysterically. It was the end of the fucking world. After probably only two minutes, felt much longer, the stream of spiders began to fade and the ones that made it were presumably making their break for the darkness in the trees while their comrades cooked. It died down surprisingly quickly because where their nest was, now it was completely in flames and uh, we all jumped onto the concrete. After 10 minutes, the log was burning perfectly, we were getting chilly, and there, was literally, and there literally wasn't a spider in sight. We shook off our seats, checked every nook and cranny nearby, and after giving it enough thought, we all eased back into our positions and laughed dramatically until the ad- adrenaline rush passed. It was so creepy that we literally couldn't find a single one of them in the grass Mm-mm. or around us. You know they're there, though. Somewhere, yeah. Oh, they're lurking. Uh, <laughs> yeah. We couldn't find a single one of them in the grass or around us, but we figured we just had to do our best to stop thinking about it and continue drinking. Nope. Pack up. Done for the night. Bye. Yeah. So if you ever need a reason to not go to Australia, there you go. A zombie horde of eight-legged fuckers were pour out... Of your firewood and surround you like an endless voice. Ugh. Fuck all of that noise. <laughs> God. Like, ugh. And that's how you know they're big, too, is when you can hear them cooking and sizzling. Oh, yeah. It's like little popcorn. Oh. Like little, little pop, pop, pop. Because they have an exoskeleton, so like they heat them inside out. A little piece of spider explodes, pops onto your face. Gross. Would you stop? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, like I said, I wouldn't even trust the spiders not to crawl into the sea either that you were standing on. No. And then they'd just, like, start crawling over you. It would be actual living hell. Yeah. That'd be the worst possible scenario. I don't get how they just, like, eased into their fire and, like, relaxed after that. Nope. I'd be packing up. I'd be done for the night. Well, they said they continued drinking. So, like, if you get enough into that, you're like, (laughs) fuck it, I'm done. Take me. (laughs) Oh, goodness. Okay, so let's quickly go to the next <laughs> yeah. story, which comes to us from Dog Soldier 67. And they say, okay, this happened 12 years ago. I was in the process of moving to the city, and my mom gave me a sort of apartment starter kit. Old pots, pans, utensils, plates, etc., including an old Tim Hortons coffee maker. Not being a dummy, I cleaned out that coffee maker as best as I could, and ran straight pots of water and vinegar through it. It ran a bit slow, but I wasn't worried. Good coffee takes time, or so I thought. My first cup of coffee tasted a bit strange. I quickly attributed this to any lingering vinegar, which I would too. Like, yeah. makes sense. You're cleaning it with vinegar. It's we've gonna had to happen. do that with one of the Keurigs that we've had. Oh yeah, those get gunked up. Yeah. So, fast forward to a week or so later, and that taste of the coffee hadn't improved. The speed of the brew was noticeably slowing, so I decided to take it apart and give it a more thorough cleaning. I'm fairly mechanically inclined, so I was able to break it down with little effort. Feeling proud of myself, I assessed the water reservoir and emptied it. What came out was a sort of dark, grainy sludge. At first I was annoyed, wondering how did coffee grounds get into the water reservoir? As I stared at the sludge, my annoyance slowly turned into revulsion and horror. 
Yes, while stored out in the shed, mice had made my mom's Tim Hortons coffee maker their home. Oh, God, you've been drinking rat essence this whole time. I had been brewing and drinking mouse turd coffee. Oh, how did you not get sick? Oh, that's, that's true. How did you not get... I mean, was it like purified or heated up or something? I mean, if you're making coffee with it, then <clears throat> maybe the heat from the hot coffee would burn it up. But like, yeah, they're, they've got a lot of disease and stuff with them, you would think. Oh my God. How, sounds... oh, I so hope that you threw it away, burn it, get rid of it ASAP. There's no coming back from that. That's almost as bad as the time you stuck your foot in a li- in a dead mouse. <laughs> yes. Okay. So we this is the apartment before here. We had lived in an apartment and like two years, three years. Yeah, it was, it was about two, two or two three years. years. It was two years. Yeah. So we lived in an apartment, and as soon as we moved in, like there were mouse droppings everywhere. It was so I mean, bad. Not just the droppings. There were mice everywhere. Yeah. It was so bad. We set so many traps and stuff, and, like, there were so many times that we got rid of so many. Oh, within the first year, I I killed a dozen mice, rats, whatever they were. Yeah, so I have a pair of Ugg slippers that were under our bed for probably a couple months, and I just decided, oh, I want those slippers. Like, my feet are cold, I want to go get those slippers. And so I go into our bedroom... And I pull out the slippers from underneath the bed and just not even thinking of anything as you wouldn't normally stick my foot into it and notice that all of a sudden my toe is cold and it's squishy. I pull (laughs) out my foot only to realize that a mouse had died in my slipper months ago and was like putrefied and like liquefying inside my slipper that i just stuck my foot in she stuck her foot into the inside of a dead liquefying mouse oh it was so bad and in my ugg slippers too i threw those sons of bitches away and went straight to the shower and (laughs) scrubbed my feet while you cried while crying yeah (laughs) Yeah. and john pouring me wine like Oh, yeah. Oh, it's so bad. I. But yep. at least you didn't drink their shit. Yeah. Ugh. That, actually, I don't know which is worse. Yeah. Because, like, they didn't know for a while. You knew instantly. That was on the inside of a rat. Yeah. Actually, I'd probably stick my foot inside of a rat instead of drinking it shit. Ugh. Yeah. There's no way. And, like, seeing the sludge. Like, what a word to use for it, too. Sludge. Ugh. Gross. Ugh. Hate it. Okay. Sorry for these... Messed up stories. <laughs> so our next story was submitted by Popper Dope. And it said, today I fucked up by thinking I could fix the kitchen drain myself. I mean, okay. YouTube. <laughs> yeah, YouTube, but also like, I get you. Handyman are expensive. Oh, yeah. Like, try to fix that shit yourself. No problem. Yep. They write, so I live in an apartment for about one and a half years. The drain in my kitchen never went smooth, but it was manageable. I just had to wait a couple minutes, so no worries. Today, I was cleaning the apartment, and when I found, and when I wanted to pour away all the dirt, I found that my drain didn't flow at all. So, I thought I could, so I thought this could be an easy fix. So, I used a plunger to get the water to drain. Unfortunately, this didn't work. I went to the store to get me some drain cleaner chemicals and poured it in. I let it rest for about two hours, which was one longer than the box had instructed. So I read online that most of the time, the problem situates in the siphon. So I get myself a bucket, and I'm ready to unscrew the siphon. All the water gushes out, including the drain chemicals. Nothing to see in the siphon, so I thought it was fixed. I tried to put it all together again. Fortunately, I managed to get all of it to fit again. I let the water flow to see if it was fixed, but after the siphon is filled... The water stays in the sink and won't drain at all. Okay, after that, you, you call someone. You call someone, yeah. Because, yeah. yeah, you take that, uh, like that, that J-pipe down. Mm-hmm. Usually, that's where everything clogs up. You know, you get it all out of there, clean it. You put it back. If that didn't fix the problem, you call somebody. That's that. I like that they left the cleaner or whatever 
in there for an hour extra longer too. Like I would too. Like extra strength, really get it. That's in there not how that up. works. In my head, once you is. get to a, <laughs> once you get to a certain point, then like it just kind of plateaus. It doesn't do like any better or worse. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> so it won't drain at all. So I take it all apart again, and I tried to pick in the pipes and the walls with some iron wire. I feel something, and I start to push against it with some force. I get through oh, some. No. <laughs> I get through something, and suddenly there flows a tsunami of dirty sink water out mm. of the pipe, all over the cupboard and floor. Wet and smelly as fuck. I think the problem is solved. So I put the siphon back together, but I did something wrong, and I can hear something break. So I look at it, and there's a massive crack in one of the pipes. Oh, God. Now I'm sitting here, fully defeated, all wet and smelly, waiting for a real plumber to come and help me out of my misery. Go shower. Just go shower. First thing, if you're all smelly, clean up the water. I mean, he said he called a plumber. Put some, like, cloth in there, clog it up, so no more water is flowing, or shut off the water valve. Go shower, because, look... I, but will your shower still work if that's messed up? Like yeah. the water? Yeah. Oh, okay. If, if you have... There, there's water shutoffs to everything that has like a flow. Like you can shut the water off to your uh, washing machine, but your shower will still work because oh, you're, just okay. flow, you're just shutting off the flow to your washing machine. It's like right there by the washer usually. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, that's <clears> an apartment <throat> is what they said, isn't it? So they might not have that. No, we, or would they we had, still? Yeah, we had water shutoffs that were oh. right by the washer. Okay. Goes to show what I know. Well, also, when it gets to be, like, that bad, call somebody first. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, take off that J-pipe. If that's not the problem, call somebody. Yeah. Like, the small handy repair, like, you know, try to take care of that. But other than that, call somebody. There, it's, there's professionals for a reason. Ugh. And then, like I said, go shower because at one of my old jobs, I used to have to fix sinks and stuff. Mm-hmm. And... Let me tell you, backed up sewage water is the nastiest smelling thing. Oh, it smells thing. so bad. It's the nastiest smelling thing that you yeah. can think of. Like, there's so many times where I had to go to people's houses and I could smell what they ate a week ago. Ooh. Because it was so backed up. And they're like, like I said, like well, like the guy in the story, well, it was doing fine, just slowly draining after a couple minutes. But then after a week or two weeks yeah. or a month, you know, that's still been backing up over all that time. And so the guy that goes and fixes that, he has to smell all of that for the past Ugh. month that was backing up. It's the poor souls. <laughs> yeah, it's it's not a fun time. And like I said, simple things, cool. Like, you know, if you get your if you lose your wedding ring down the drain or something like mm. that, it gets caught down in that J pipe. Yeah. You know, yeah, you unhook that, you dump it out, you get it back, you put it you put it back. Simple things like that. Anything other than that? Call somebody, please call somebody because you can you can seriously do some damage with like uh, water damage or like this guy he cracked one of the pipes and then had to call somebody after messing it up even more. Yeah. And so um, also after like figuring out the problem, that's like half the battle. So yeah, g- good and then on him. Actually fixing it. Yeah, good on him for like not giving up after the cleaner didn't work. But uh, we were also able to find out that this guy spent almost $700 on a plumber to help him fix the problem. Oh my gosh. So there was probably a lot more required of like a professional. Than Drano, a plunger, and the siphon. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, there, there's so much more like work that you probably needed to do than just cleaning out the pipes. Yeah. I'm just fixated on the smelliness of the water now. Because, like, and I now get... he smells like it. Yeah, I get grossed out enough if there's, like, a dish in the sink that water's been left in it for a couple days or something. Because mm-hmm. I'm lazy sometimes and don't do the dishes that you day. You gotta let it soak. Yeah, like, that <laughs> water grosses me out so much. So now I'm just imagining that, like, compounded up mm-hmm. so much. Yeah, sometimes it can it can be the worst thing, especially if you're covered in it. Ugh. Go shower, then call a guy. Yeah. Clean that shit up or else your house will smell like it for a week. Oh, God. Yeah. yeah. Get for breeze. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so the next story comes to us from the Fire Drake 42. They write, a while back, I decided to have some popcorn while watching The Mentalist. The only kind that I had was the loose kernel kind that you have to pop in a pan and a little bit of oil. 
I had never done this before, but I thought it'd be fun and I could make a unique flavor with bacon grease, butter, smoked salt, etc. When the oil was ready, it said to put a single layer of kernels in the bottom of the pan. I did that, and 30 seconds later, everything was on fire. (laughs) The kernels popped so fast that they overflowed out of the pan and went all over the stovetop. Even when I took the pan off the heat, they kept popping and flying out, and quite a few landed on the burner, immediately bursting into flames. So now... (laughs) I'm juggling this still popping, overflowing pan while frantically trying to blow out the little popcorn fires when I accidentally blow one onto the counter and up against a roll of paper towels, which you guessed it, also started burning. Oh my god. What a shit show. Yeah, that's like one thing after another. Like all you want is popcorn and then you get this whole domino effect and your whole kitchen's on fire. That's why, like, uh, those, uh, what is it, Jiffy Pop? Have you seen those Jiffy Pop ones? The one that are in, like, the tinfoil? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why there's tinfoil on it that expands with it so none of them come out. Gotcha. Yeah. Safety. That <laughs> makes sense. Well, he didn't have this kind, or she didn't. Okay, so they say, oh, and I was shirtless getting peppered with hot drops of grease and oil the whole time. Which, like... <sighs> That's why if I cook bacon, I am in there with, like, long sleeves, long pants, like, oven mitts, tongs, shoes, You have, like, medieval armor on. I do. (laughs) I hate it so much because, like, no matter what I do, I get grease popping out at me everywhere and it hurts so bad. Imagine it, like, just flying at you, like, with the popcorn. And then catching all those things on fire, too. God. (laughs) So... They say, I went from can't wait for some popcorn to everything's on fire in a span of about 15 to 20 seconds. I finally set the pan on the floor, still popping a bit, and I grabbed some tongs to pick up the half-inflamed roll of toilet or the paper towels and tossed it into the sink, dousing it with the sprayer. Which, like, lucky it wasn't a grease fire if you're cooking them. Oh, I mean, well, I guess he's cooking them in oil. That's not the same, right? I mean, don't mix grease or oil with water. Oh, yeah. Oil still doesn't go with it. No. But, yeah, so it's lucky that even putting it in the sink and using the water with it did work. But just with the paper towels? Yeah. Did they do that? Oh, yeah. They wouldn't have oil or anything Yeah, it was them. just the roll of paper Duh. towels. Yeah. Okay. Makes <clears throat> sense. Okay, so the popcorn that was on the burner had mostly burned out. Their little fires were short-lived but intense. I blew out the remaining embers, caught my breath, and looked at the smoky remains of my life slash kitchen. (laughs) (laughs) I saved about a third of the popcorn that had stayed in the pan. The rest I swept up and tossed. Then I cleaned up the stove, got a well-deserved beer from the fridge. Yes, you deserve that beer. Oh, yeah. Probably two. Oh, yeah. Maybe like a (laughs) six-pack. And sat down with my snack to resume my show, but it honestly didn't even taste that good. I mean, I still ate, I still ate it all, but that was mostly out of spite. Yeah, it tastes like defeat. Yeah. <laughs> At that point, like, he went through that whole ordeal and then had a third of the popcorn left that just didn't even taste good, too. Time to throw it away, order a pizza with that, with that beer, yeah. and just relax for the night, because that was just not your day. He eats it, because I'll be damned if he's going through all that <laughs> for nothing. Okay, yeah, I totally get that. Yeah. I would probably eat as much as I could, too, because yeah. there's no way I'm letting it win. No. Your whole <laughs> kitchen's on fire, and you don't even get anything about it? Nope. Okay. So this next story is submitted by Silhouette951. says, Today I fucked up by making someone think I was going to murder and bury her. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Make Christy think that every day. Woohoo, that's why I'm <laughs> still here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this just happened and I can't believe I didn't think about the situation. For reference, <laughs> I'm a pretty big guy and I don't exactly look like a teddy bear. I posted a folded folding wagon online and someone said she wanted it. To both of our surprise, we work at the same hospital, so drop off slash pickup would be easy. Convenient. Right? Our hospital is huge, so we agreed to meet at my car in the parking garage. The wagon was in my car and we greeted one another and I opened the trunk to get the wagon out. She immediately stepped back 
when I opened the trunk than I saw it. I will take a step back to mention that I was last weekend at my parents' house helping them tear down a shed and a bunch of trees. I had all the tools at my house, so I brought them over to help. The tools included a shovel, pickaxe, sledgehammer, reciprocating <laughs> saw, axe, hatchet, hacksaw, large blue tarp, work oh, gloves, tarp. and a rope. Not a good look. The only things he's missing is duct tape. Right. And, yeah. <laughs> they were all covered in mud. It was literally a murder and disposal kit <laughs> that all looked well used. I just put them in my trunk and forgot to take them out. I didn't notice them when I put the wagon in because it was the morning and still very dark. I explained the situation and took the wagon out for her. She ended up being co-workers with my mom and remembered my mom mentioning uh, the new shed at work a few weeks prior. So we had a laugh about it in the end and I was certain I would be maced or tased for sure. She just like slowly backs up. She's like, oh no. Right? I mean, I get it though because I always have like random tools in my car for one reason or another. A lot of men do. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like you... You know, you might help somebody with something, you know, three or four months ago and mm-hmm. then just kind of leave them in there until you need them again. Yeah. Throw and it in your car and then it's still there. Exactly. So I could totally see someone like looking into my trunk and thinking like, I just buried a body or like dismembered a corpse or, you know, something like that. Yeah. I'm pretty sure if you looked in there right now, there would be like probably duct tape, probably a handsaw. A skateboard. Probably, yeah. A random skateboard, <laughs> you know. A, a hard, hard hat. hat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just a whole bunch of like random stuff that doesn't make sense. Yeah. So like I get it, but that's hilarious. A whole murder kit. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, you look in your trunk. There's like bourbon barrel. Like yeah, all these slats for bourbon barrels. <laughs> yeah. Don't judge someone by their trunk. Yeah. Unless it's like bloody. Well, yeah. <laughs> but she was probably looking for blood as she like yeah. stepped back. <laughs> Okay, so next we have an anonymous story. They write, I am seven months pregnant, and girl, it has been a ridiculous ride thus far. This is my second pregnancy, and the symptoms just keep a coming. Two of those are number one, varicose veins in places that I didn't know they could go, my whole vagina, vulva situation. And prolapse bladder. Not a full prolapse, but I can feel it happening, and it isn't as unpleasant as it sounds. Wait, what, what, is, what does that mean? That would be so uncomfortable. Prolapse means, like, I believe that that's where it's, like, starting to drop out. So kind of like a hernia almost, but, yeah. like, the organ comes out? Yeah, like your whole organ is coming out. So, like, she's growing a dick. No! I mean, think about it. That, okay, no. (laughs) She's going through some stuff, okay? Yeah, okay, I'm sorry. (laughs) At this point in my pregnancy, I can't see jack shit down there, and a mirror doesn't work super well. So my dear husband has been doing periodic investigations to reassure me that my organs are still mostly inside my body and give me an update to the whole situation. What a good support system. Right? Right. Says he's an incredibly funny man who has a very expressive face, and which is a big part of why it went off the rails. Which, like, like you said, it's so great that she obviously has a good support system. They obviously are like super comfortable with each other and love each other enough to like be comfortable all up in their regions and mm-hmm. checking their organs. I'll check your organs. Oh, shanks. It's gross, but I'd do it. <laughs> Okay, so he's down there taking a look, and he's not holding back. He looks pained, like he's viewing a corpse, telling me lovingly as a joke that it looks like a hamburger down there. (laughs) Oh, God. (laughs) And generally giving an unfavorable report. This is all too much for me and my raging hormones, which either have me laughing, crying, or murdering kittens. Which, like, is a joke. She's not murdering kittens, I'm sure. Hopefully. Hopefully. I start laughing uncontrollably. He won't stop with the jokes. And suddenly I let out a very long, sonorous fart right in his face. (laughs) He just says, okay, gets up. And we both end up crying from laughing so hard from the ridiculousness of it all. Which, like, she just got so relaxed that she just, like, 
let it out yeah. right in his face. A nice gust of wind. There was one time I went up behind my cousin and like was going to pants him secretly. And I got down on one knee <laughs> and I pants him. As soon as his pants went down, he farted right in he my face. He was ready. No, it was just complete coincidence. Oh. He had no idea. And it was in front of like 20 people. Oh my God. Yeah. So don't pants people, guys. That would be so funny. But, like, she probably felt better after that fart, too, if it was that big. <laughs> probably. She's like, ah, sweet release. Yeah. She was like, sorry, hon. You gotta take one for the team. Yeah. Like, pregnancy does not sound fun. I hear so many horror stories about it. I can't imagine. I think women always hear the horror stories about it because guys never have to go through it. Guys yeah. don't hear the horror stories because we don't, we're, not, we're not the ones that get pregnant. Well, and... People so much more talk about the bad than the good. Yeah, you Those don't get around tell, a lot more. You don't want to tell a story of, I got pregnant, it was smooth sailing, gave birth, and that was that. Yeah, it was two minutes of labor when there's a lady next to you that's like, it was 42 hours. Oh Yeah, like my sister when she gave birth, she said it was like 30 seconds and it just poof, shot right out of her. Yeah. And, you know, there's so many other people that have such troubles. So it probably is just a lot easier to talk about the bad stuff. Mm -hmm. So that the ladies that don't have it that well off feel a little better. Oh, yeah. You don't want the other people to get jealous, like, feel they're doing something wrong. Because yeah. they're not. It's no. a very complicated process. It's so complicated. And so, like, your heart's in it. Mm -hmm. It's a lot. All right. So for our next story, this is... Submitted by Key Four Ooks. Yeah. All right. And they submitted saying, Today I fucked up by not really realizing how much a phone microphone picks up. This has oh, happened no. over a long period of time, but I only learned about it recently. I always go outside to take phone calls while I'm at work. I don't want anyone to interrupt me, and I don't want my talking to bother anyone else. I get it. <clears throat> oh, yeah. I don't like talking on the phone in general, so especially if there's people around. But I think that's also my anxiety. Well, it's just not their business. Yeah, that's true. Well, when you're around other people, there are some things that aren't considered appropriate in a professional setting. So when I go outside to take a phone call, I always let off some gas that's been building up as I've been sitting at my desk. <laughs> my lady friend called i went outside ripped one and it smelled so bad i said man that was a judgment error <laughs> i expected her uh to ask what i meant uh because she had no idea what i was talking about i was wrong she said oh, no. why does it stink I, I asked if she heard it and she confirmed that yes she did it sounded like a rusty door <laughs> As for the fucked up part, I've taken or made calls with a whole array of, of people. Insurances, banks, tech support, customer service, friends, coworkers, And now I'm sure they've all had to listen to my flatulence and were too polite or professional or embarrassed to say anything about it. Oh that's, my goodness. That's fucking hilarious. Like that poor woman, she thinks she's been so sneaky and just letting huge ones rip. But everyone knows exactly like what she's doing. Or they're like... Good for her. What confidence. Let's normalize this. I mean, you would hope. Probably not. But probably but... <laughs> not. No. She's like calling the bank and they're like, <laughs> great, it's the pants shitter. <laughs> oh. And they play like rock, paper, scissors to see who has to like deal with her. <laughs> yeah, they see it on the caller ID. <laughs> they're like, oh God, not this one again. I can smell it through the phone. <laughs> they're like, she thinks she's so sneaky. Right? <laughs> Okay, so our last story today is coming to us from I'm Garan. And they write and say, Over the years, when it comes to certain foods at family reunions, Sunday dinners, or at a barbecue hosted by friends, people tasting things will sometimes tell me that I will not like it, along with like a funny smile or smirk or something like that. Since these people are, of course, trusted family and friends, I took them at their word and simply did not taste or eat the food that they pointed out. No, they're being sarcastic. After all, they are just looking out for me and I have no reason to suspect or question their word on such a simple thing as food. Hey, there's gullible on the ceiling. There was almost <laughs> always plenty of other food to eat. No, don't just trust people like that. Especially like, like with a coy smirk or something. Yeah. My family does that all the time. Yeah. Only oh, when yeah, the food's my family really good. too. Oh, yeah. So they say, today I find out 
they have all freaking lied to me. Decided to eat something anyways, and oh my god, was it delicious. <laughs> Years of unknown regret rained on me when somebody explained to me the phrase, you won't like this, means that you will love it. <sighs> but like, you missed out on so much good food. Yeah, that poor soul. <laughs> so much good food. And like... I like that through the years, no one caught on that when you said that, you didn't go and get the food. Yeah, what a bunch of dicks. <laughs> Nobody <laughs> said anything to you because, like, down the line, somebody had to have noticed Yeah. that any time that they would say that, you actually would not get the food. Oh, man. How it's... trusting, though. <laughs> like. Yeah, super, like, shelter or something, just trusting uh... everybody at their word. But, oh, you missed out on so much good food. Now they're probably going to, like, eat everything that they can. Wait, the like, whole through life... the years, keep a list of what everybody has said <laughs> yeah. not to eat and just go back and eat everything. Their whole life just got flipped upside down. It's like, I can't trust anybody. Yeah. I can't trust anything. The world is a lie. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they'll probably found out, find a whole bunch of foods they do and don't like from now on. Yeah. But, man, that has to suck. Because, like, I couldn't imagine going to, like, a banquet or something and, like, uh, my stepmom makes these really good, like, uh, Mm -hmm. crazy potatoes. Oh, man. If someone, if I had never known what what those, like, tasted like, I would fight somebody the day I learned, like, what they actually tasted like. Especially at, like, family reunions and stuff. If it's, like, a family recipe that you've never tried. Because people are like, oh, you're not going to like it. Yeah, you have that joking uncle that's kind of ribbing you a little bit. Uh Like, oh, you're not going to like this. Like, come on, guy. Try it. And like, (laughs) feeling so happy that all these people are looking out for you. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) They're like, wow, what nice people. And then it just turns out it's the complete opposite. Yeah, you're living like this living on cloud nine kind of life. Yeah. And then it turns out like everyone's been lying to you or you're just dumb. (laughs) You just don't know. Yeah. Lesson of today, don't trust people. Don't trust people and fight your boss. Well, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks everybody for listening. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. So, you may have made a mistake today, but at least you didn't mess up as badly as the people we discussed. And if you did, we'd love to hear about it, and we may even feature your story on an upcoming episode. You can find us online at www.savagelydelightful.buzzsprout.com, on Twitter at savage underscore delight, and on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube at savagelydelightful. If you like what you heard today and want to show your support, please consider donating to us on Patreon at patreon.com slash savagely delightful. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you don't miss future episode releases, and please consider leaving a review so it's easier for others to find our podcast.